Hello and welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness. Well, it's Christmas Eve, the night that Scrooge was visited by three ghosts. Four, if you count Marley. Jacob, not Bob. Though how cool would it be to be visited by the ghost of Bob Marley? But I digress. Tonight, I bring you six ghost stories, and nary a one will prompt you to change your ways and buy a Christmas goose for Tiny Tim. The kid from A Christmas Carol, not the singer. Some of the stories are heartwarming and some are scary, but all of them are centered around retail's favorite holiday, Christmas. So sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together, together, together. Years ago, during the Christmas season, after my husband suddenly died over the summer, I took my two daughters, ages four and nine at the time, to get pictures taken with Santa. By the time we arrived, both girls needed the restroom. We were all still in the state of shock from their father's sudden death, and the girls had been bickering the entire 30-minute car ride there. My nerves were shot long before that, and that day, I was a wreck. We got to the bathroom, which had three stalls. The girls took the first two stalls and began talking back and forth, while I stood near the door, waiting. After a moment, a well-dressed woman entered the restroom right after us. She looked me in the eye and smiled so warmly that it kind of threw me off guard a bit. But I smiled back. She just stood there listening to my girls prattle on excitedly about Christmas. Then, she smiled again. I thought it a bit odd, but sweet. She then turned to me and said, Children are such a blessing, aren't they? Suddenly, I wanted to cry. Through all of my grief and stress, I'd almost forgotten what treasures my little girls were. I nodded to the woman, and she entered the last stall. A second or two later, another woman entered the restroom. I told her, all the stalls are in use, but my daughters will be done soon. The woman walked over to the last stall and said, Uh, no, this one's empty. And she proceeded to enter the stall that the other woman had just entered and never exited. To this day, I have no idea who or what that woman was, but she not only turned my day around, but maybe my life. When I was about 14 years old, I got a Ouija board for Christmas. My parents thought it would be a fun game, and I was thrilled and anxious to use it. But I wanted to do it when nobody else was around. I figured there would be no way to cheat if it was only me playing. I had lost my grandfather when I was five years old, and we were very close. Papa and I were attached at the hip, and when I lost him, I was devastated. So that Christmas night, after everyone had gone to bed, I lit a candle, pulled out the board, and tried to contact my papa. At first, nothing happened, and I was heartbroken. I really wanted to talk to him. So I asked if there were any other spirits that could find him and let him know that I wanted to talk to him. The next thing I knew, the candle was blown out and the planchette was ripped from my fingers and thrown against the wall, hard. Then, I felt a very dark presence in the room with me. I immediately jumped up, flipped on the light, and screamed for my parents. But they, of course, laughed it off. They told me I had just scared myself. Needless to say, I never got to speak to my papa that night, and I never touched a Ouija board again. But there was a price to pay for being so stupid and naive. To this day, that dark presence still haunts me. I can't get rid of it. I've been to priests, shamans, and white witches, and none of them have been able to banish this thing from my life. Playing with the Ouija board is the worst mistake I've ever made. 
by opening a door to the other side and not knowing how to close it again, I've allowed this thing to attach itself to me. I flat out refuse to touch another one of those boards again. I would tell anyone wanting to use one of them to go to somebody well-versed and experienced in that type of summoning. Otherwise, stay away. The dead are on the other side of the veil for a reason. The border should not be crossed just because someone wants to say hello to their dead papa. And Milton Bradley should never have mass-produced these things and sold them as a game. There's no telling how many doors to the other side have been opened because of kids messing around. For the past 20 years, my sister has lived in our childhood home. She and my mom insist that my grandmother's ghost is still living there. My sister had just begun watching the TV show Ghost Adventures because the main guy, Zach, is hilarious. And apparently, she had started using one of those ghost voice recording apps, and she had actually picked up some fun things, like hearing voices speaking names. In an effort to communicate with any spirits that may be hanging around, she would start talking out loud around the house if she heard odd noises or the pets seemed to detect something. Well, Christmas Eve three years ago, my sister had just gotten a divorce, and it was her first Christmas alone, aside from the two dogs and two cats. She volunteers at the VFW and had been making cookies all day to take to them on Christmas and she was understandably sad and discouraged being around all that holiday joy as a new divorcee. So after baking the cookies, she decided to leave the washing up for later. She tried to cheer herself up by watching a movie. It was Christmas Eve, so she chose National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. During the scene where the cat causes mayhem, she swears she heard a scoffing, laughing sound coming from the back of the living room by the stairwell. The dogs were on the couch with her, but the two cats were upstairs. She rationalized that it must be one of the cats that made the sound, even though it sounded human. But just in case, she paused the movie, opened up her ghost voice recording app, and focused on hearing a spirit. While sitting there in silence concentrating on the app, she heard the sound of the cookie pans falling to the floor in the kitchen. The two cats came bolting down the stairs, through the living room, and into the kitchen, while the two dogs, who had been sleeping on the couch next to her, started barking like mad and also ran into the kitchen. My sister is not afraid of anything, so she followed right behind them. But by the time she entered the kitchen just moments later, Nothing was out of order. The pans were still on the counter awaiting their washing, and the animals had calmed down and were already back to normal. In fact, they were already calmly eating their food and playing, as if nothing had happened at all. But when she went back into the living room, she said she had a feeling of not being alone anymore, as if somebody were there with her. But she shook it off and went back to her movie. A little while later, she again heard the sounds of pans in the kitchen. But this time, it only sounded like they were being shifted around on top of the counter, rather than falling on the floor. The dogs perked up, but they didn't bark or move. Since the animals had all calmed down so fast before, and they didn't seem to be in the least bit bothered now, my sister thought it may be our grandmother's spirit making all the noise. So she paused the movie again and spoke out loud. Grandma, if this is you, you don't have to cook anything right now, and I'll wash the pans later. It's Christmas Eve. Come on, watch the movie with me. After that, everything went quiet, and my sister said it felt like somebody was with her the rest of the night, but that it wasn't a scary feeling. In fact, she felt comforted like our grandmother was enjoying the movie with her on Christmas Eve. Our grandmother was an alcoholic, having turned to the bottle after her husband died in Vietnam and their young daughter was killed in a car accident. My dad's side of the family blamed her for the death, 
and they made her life a living hell. She was deeply sad at the end of her life, so it makes me happy to think that she could spend Christmas Eve with my sister watching funny movies. As a child, I could hear and see things that others around me couldn't. I always brushed off the events until one Christmas night proved to me that I wasn't just seeing things. Our neighborhood was having a huge Christmas party. After dinner, all of us kids decided to play hide-and-seek together in the dark outside. We decided to play in my yard because it had a lot of trees and bushes, giving us plenty of places to hide. I was hiding in the garden, and I counted four other kids hiding near me. Three of them were my neighbors, and one was a kid that I assumed was one of their cousins, because I didn't automatically recognize him. The game went on, and eventually all of the kids were found, except one neighbor, their cousin, and me. When the game ended, those of us not found went to the front of my house, where all of the other kids were gathering. That's when I noticed that the mystery kid hadn't come out of hiding. I went back to the garden again and walked over to him, tapped him on the shoulder, and told him that the game had ended. He can come out now. He looked at me, smiled and nodded, and started walking towards the front of the house to join the other kids. As he did that, I took one more sweep of the garden to make sure that nobody else had been left behind. Then I joined the group myself. But when I got there, I noticed that this boy still wasn't with them. So I asked my neighbors where he was, and nobody knew who I was talking about. They did a head count, and everyone was accounted for, and they said I must have been mistaken. But I insisted that there was a boy missing. I had physically touched and spoken to him. The others actually got angry with me. They told me to stop making up stories. They said that just because it's dark out didn't give me permission to start freaking everybody out by telling ghost stories. They were all so upset with me that I just dropped the issue. But from that Christmas day on, I knew that the paranormal was a very real thing, and the things that I had been seeing and hearing were not just my imagination. My sister Diane passed away in July. In September, I was sitting in the family room sewing when I heard the Burl Ives tune Have a Holly Jolly Christmas. I was sitting near the storage closet located under the stairs where we keep all of our Christmas decorations, and the sound was coming from there. So I moved the furniture out of the way and I opened up the little closet door. I pulled out box after box of decorations and in the very last one, I found a Santa figurine nodding its head and playing that song. Diane had given me that figurine as a gift years earlier. Now, this thing worked on batteries, and it had an on-off switch. I checked, and the switch was on, so I turned it off. Then it hit me. This thing had been put away in a storage room that was blocked by a TV and a chair, and if it had been put away in January with the switch on, wouldn't I have heard the music long before this? After all, I used that room almost every day. Plus, it was put away nine months ago. Wouldn't the batteries be dead by now? I wish I had a logical explanation, but I don't. To preface this, I live in a house that was built in 1909, and I've lived here my whole life. Ever since I was a child, I've always gotten very weird vibes from this house at night. We have an attic that's full of things like Christmas decorations, old toys, books, clothes, etc. It's a very small attic, and with all that stuff up there, only one person can fit up there at a time. Also, the house is so old, there's no electricity in the attic, 
so no lights, no outlets, nothing. So, one hot July night, around 3 a.m., a noise could be heard in the house. Music, and it was coming from the attic. Mom went up to investigate, but as soon as her foot hit the top step, it stopped. She hadn't turned anything off or found anything out of place. It just stopped on its own. We all went back to bed, but I couldn't sleep. I knew I had heard that sound before. I was certain that it was my favorite Christmas decoration. So the next morning, I went up there, and I saw the Christmas decoration sitting right there at the top of the stairs, not even in a box or anything just sitting there on the top of the attic stairs. Now, that was weird, because we always pack away our decorations neatly, and we put them away in a box. And I specifically remember putting that one away. The other weird thing? The decoration is a Christmas carousel, and it only works if you plug it in. It has no batteries, or even a compartment to put batteries. It's 100% electric, and it needs to be plugged into an outlet, of which there are none in our attic. I told my mom, and I asked her if she had seen it up there the previous night when she checked, and she said no, and we were like, okay. So we threw it out, thinking that was the end. But I kid you not, the very next week, at 3 a.m., the same music starts playing in the attic again. Again, my mother went up there and found the same decoration we threw out the previous week. The same stupid no-outlet, no-battery carousel was up there playing music when it shouldn't have been able to play anything. It shouldn't have even been there. We threw it out. The next day, we took it to the dump, and we haven't seen or heard it since. I certainly hope these stories didn't scare Santa away. I doubt it, though. He's not afraid of much, that guy. Besides, you can always lure him back with the promise of cookies and milk. You'd think he'd be sick of them after so many millennia of scarfing those sugar bombs down. Or at the very least, you'd think he'd have type 2 diabetes by now, right? I hope you enjoyed the stories tonight, and that you all have a merry, socially distant Christmas tomorrow, no matter what your religious affiliations or lack thereof. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for spending part of your day with me. I truly appreciate every one of you, and I look forward to our Thursdays together. And a word of advice before we go, if in the middle of the night you hear someone rooting around in your living room, don't panic and call 911. It's just Santa bringing his gifts. So, until next time, stay scared, my friends. And Merry Christmas. <laughs>